This is part 2 of 7 of how I got involved in some doping stuff. Now before you type any hate comments, by stuff I mean scientific study in a lab. I didn't do any doping. I swear. In part 1, I told you what was being done and why. Today I'm gonna tell you how. Short story long, the study involves 5 lab visits. Visit 1 is where you meet the team. Shout out to Chris and Harry, amazing individuals that made the time in the lab very enjoyable. You fill in some questionnaires and then they measure your body composition and you do a VO2 max test to assess your fitness. Visit 2 is where you familiarize yourself with the test protocol without taking any medication and then visit 3, 4 and 5 is where you take either dehydrocodeine, tapentadol or a placebo. Obviously you don't know what you're taking and neither do Chris and Harry so it's a double blinded study to avoid any biases. Now onto the test protocol. It's a 20 minutes warm up at a very low intensity just to get the legs spinning. Then you do 30 minutes on rollers where you have to balance at a fatiguing but non exhaustive power. That's around zone 3 if you're using a 5 training zone system. And then you go straight into a 40 km time trial on an ERG, self paced, and you have to cover the distance as quick as possible. What they measure on the rollers is your balance and how much the medication affects your ability to handle the bike. So they have motion cameras that measure how much you deviate from side to side. Once you're done with the rollers, your legs are already quite fatigued. So the time trial allows them to see how much you're able to push yourself with or without the medication. The only data you can see is the distance. No heart rate, no power, no time. So you have no feedback on how you're doing. You just have to put your head down and push as hard as you can until the end. And Chris and Harry are not allowed to give you any encouragement. It's very lonely. The medication is kept for you in the lab and you only take it when you do your visit 3, 4 or 5. The painkillers are out of your body after 6 to 12 hours. Alright, now that you know what, why and how, you're gonna wanna stick around to see how it went. So make sure you follow and I'll see you in part 3 for a recap of visit 1. Peace.